Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. We find ourselves in week two of our meditation on kindness and goodness, and we expand our understanding of these attributes in 2 Samuel chapter 2, 4 through 6. And they told David, saying, It was the men of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul. David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, May you be blessed to the Lord because you have shown this kindness to Saul your Lord and have buried him. Now may the Lord show loving kindness and truth to you. And I also will show the goodness to you because you have done this thing. These verses are the continuation of the demise of King Saul at the hand of God who used the Philistines to carry his will out against a self-centered, disobedient servant king. The Philistines had put Saul in an inescapable situation, and so Saul took his own life. The victorious army cut Saul's head off and hung him on a wall. The kind, good men of Jabesh Gilead heard what had happened and went and retrieved Saul and burned him and buried his bones at Jabesh. We see here that even when the defeat that Israel had taken in the death of their king, coupled with the risk of running into the Philistines, the men of Jabesh did the kind and good thing and took no credit for it. David, who just had been anointed king, was told what the men of Jabesh had done, and he extends his goodness to them and asks the Lord to bless them with his kindness and his truth. We see that kindness and goodness breeds more kindness and goodness. It shows why Jesus taught to love our enemies and the Bible teaches to leave vengeance to the Lord. How does the old saying go? You can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Proverbs 14.22 reinforces this doctrine when it says, Will they not go astray who devise evil? but kindness and truth will be to those who devise good. Do you notice in the verse from 2 Samuel and Proverbs 14 that out of truth flows kindness and goodness? Loved ones, when someone does not know and live by the truth of God's word, they will be much more likely to, to devise evil because it is the bent of the flesh. In other words, the conviction of men's hearts is accomplished by the Spirit through the truth of God's Word, which supernaturally produces love and righteousness, leading to kindness and goodness. So please hear, study, and obey the truth of God's Word in order to be moved and controlled by His Spirit, and you will bear the fruit of the Spirit, including kindness and goodness. Bow with me in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, have us apply your Son's kindness and goodness in our lives. Make us have our eyes focused on Jesus by his teachings and not be influenced by our greedy and unforgiving culture which teaches self-reliance rather than dependence on Christ. Lord, please, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that indwells us, make us submit to your will by dedicating the necessary time to worship you by studying and praying over your word. Moreover, Father, through our dedication to these disciplines, fill us with the Spirit's enabling power in order for us to bear his fruit in our lives, including the active, tender expression of kindness and goodness towards others. Amen. Amen. Dear the beloved, please hear the word of God from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. The Lord God says to Joshua, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. 
for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Dearly beloved, dear members of the First Hungarian Reformed Church, dear friends, whenever we hear Tom saying these words, actually these devotionals at the beginning of our service, and actually as, a, uh, as an introduction, we could say an introduction to the sermon, that's always a great teaching, number one, and an encouragement for all of us in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I greatly appreciate what Tom is doing Sunday by Sunday as he's teaching us, encouraging us. He speaks unto our hearts, basically, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we may gain more knowledge about the Lord, we may grow in faith, and we may walk more effectively and more humbly as we heard, and uh, more lovingly on the way of Jesus Christ. So, thank you, Tom. I greatly appreciate your ministry among us as a lay minister in our church's life. So, focusing on, dear friends, uh, on our scripture reading that Louis uh, just read, and also our text uh, for this morning's sermon, let me just give you a, a little short reflection what what were uh, in, what is important to know in order to continue uh, the teachings from the book of Nehemiah. If you remember, and I don't know how much you remember, but let me refresh your uh, memory. On the September 15th and 22nd Sunday worship services, we heard sermons about God, about God's vision and purpose for our lives that we may discover. Yes, we may discover God's vision and God's purpose for our lives. They are not hidden, they are not secret, but they can be discovered and they can be revealed by God, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and we can follow them. Not just follow them, but we can fulfill and accomplish those visions, those purposes that God bestows on our lives and our hearts. God the Heavenly Father has put within you a desire to make a difference. Originally, you live a life that has a desire to do something great in this world, to be a part of something bigger than yourselves. And sometimes you uh, get that fire in your heart and in your life that, yes, I want to be part of that. I want to do something important. I want to do something that people would remember me, oh, he did that, or she did that. These are important things, dearly beloved, to glorify God, to fulfill those visions and purposes, to glorify God, that's number one, and also working through these to the benefit of others, for blessing other people. There is, a huge, there is a deep human desire to make a difference. It is in you and it is in me. It is, we are created in that and by that. Additionally, we also talked about two great tragedies when we are talking about uh, vision and purpose. The first is that a lot of people never discover why God made them. Never. They just aimlessly uh, wander through this world and, uh, and they have the, the idea or a, uh, a personal vision statement, oh, I just uh, get through, the, through another day. That's it. And no major purpose is no major vision given by God uh, found in their lives. The second tragedy is the, the, uh, that some are, some people uh, discover and begin to live out their vision and purpose, but they never finish them. Something comes into, way, into their way and they are not able to finish and accomplish that purpose, uh, that vision. This last one usually happens because they get distracted. They get distracted. Life is so full of distractions that visions 
and real purposes are lost among the different things in life. We will talk about that later on. So as we are focusing on our scripture reading from the book of Nehemiah chapter 6, we find that the building of the wall was going very well for Nehemiah. He and the people were working hard, as we heard earlier. And if you read uh, the, the book of Nehemiah, you find that, that they were so blessed by God and they were accomplished the humanly impossible. But have you ever experienced when things are going really well, then something happens, something negative, something bad. Distractions may occur. Have you ever experienced that? Yes? Been there, done that, just like me. When uh, things are going on a great way in our lives, then suddenly something just tries to ruin everything. In Nehemiah's case, they were just days away from seeing the vision and plan completed, the dream come true. The wall of Jerusalem was almost done, only the gates needed to be finished. Isn't that amazing? They built the walls in 52 days. A little bit more than one and a half month. A month and a half. Isn't that amazing? Just think about a huge city, the capital city we are talking about. And that's, that's surrounded uh, by a protecting wall. And they finished the work. Now they are protecting only the gates. That's, that's not a huge deal. You know, they could do, do it in a couple of days. However, we also find that Nehemiah was at a very dangerous time. When the novelty of the vision has worn off, and the people are tired, and you're almost done, you are this much away from the finish line, it's easy to get distracted. And these distractions could literally kill the vision and the purpose. What kind of distractions we may face? We have, we have heard so much about this word and expression, but let's look at what kind of them are existing in our lives and how to handle them. I brought two for this morning, two distractions that may have an effect on your life and may have an effect on my life. They can hinder us to accomplish great things in our lives. So let's look at them. The first one is criticism. Am I right when I am saying that only I was criticizing this whole church? You have never been criticized. Is that true? Oh, Joyce, then God bless you. She said, oh, Reverend Chuck, don't say that. Oh, Dr. Chuck, you always call me Dr. Chuck. Yes. Have you ever been criticized? Let me just see. Yeah. Okay. Welcome in the club. <laughs> yes. We are criticized. Why will you be criticized? Why? For one thing, when you have a vision and purpose, when you want to accomplish something in life, okay, when you want to fulfill something important in your life, maybe in your personal life, or in your family, or at your workplace, or maybe in the church, it is a very easy thing to, critic to be criticized by those who do nothing about it. Did you hear that? It's very easy. That others who are just spectators, you know, they are looking at you in a far distance. They don't do anything about it, what you have in mind, what, you, what plans you have, and what you want to accomplish. But they say, oh, you will not be able to do it. Why you are doing that way? And so on and so forth. You know what I mean. It's very, very easy to be criticized by those who do nothing about it. Additionally, your decisions and your actions may seem to be a threat to someone else. You have a wonderful, great idea. You want to accomplish something that would be for the glory of God and to bless others, to help others, and people are coming that, mm, you know, that would be a bad thing for our church. Just an example. 
or at your workplace, you have a wonderful idea that would benefit many people through that idea, through that plan that you present. But people think that, oh, that would ruin us financially. That would not uh, be, uh, we would not be capable of following that through. Dear friends, that's possible. And you can be easily criticized if someone feels that, oh, that would be a threat for them. In our scripture reading, we heard that Sanballat and uh, Tobiah had a vested interest. They didn't want the wall of Jerusalem to be rebuilt, period. That was their goal. They wanted to do everything to hinder, to stop the wall being project in Jerusalem. They were enemies of Israel. And consequently, listen to this, it's very interesting, because they were enemies of Israel, consequently they were enemies of God. Mm, don't say that. I can prove you very easily. Israel was the chosen people of God. Whoever touches Israel in a negative way, then those are also against God. Think about David and Goliath. You remember the story? David says, how come this pagan man saying anything against the people of the sovereign God? How could he mock us? How could he say any bad things about it? So Goliath, not just talking about against Israel, the people of Israel, but against God as well. So David was so furious <laughs> about that because he wanted to protect God, number one, and his people. So these guys, Sanballat and Tobiah and later on Geshem, they were against Israel. Consequently, they were against God. They were enemies of God. And that is all that Nehemiah needed to know about them when he faced their criticism. If they opposed God, then they were going to criticize ne Nehemiah. And they were against Nehemiah. So let me give you a practical way how to handle criticism. Number one, source the criticism. Source it. Know where it comes from, who that person is, since the source will often tell you more than the criticism itself. Look at the person. Look at him or her. Who is saying that? What is saying? And, uh, and then source the criticism. And number two, do not waste your time on such people. Do not waste your time on such people. You can try to convince them, good luck, <laughs> you will be unsuccessful. How do I know it? Out of experience. Out of experience. Do not waste your time on such people who constantly criticize you. They don't help you to fulfill your God-given vision and purpose in your life. The other distraction is opportunities. Nehemiah had almost completed the project, as we heard. It had become obvious that the vision was going to be successful despite the opposition and criticism. Now Nehemiah was invited to an important meeting with Sambalat and Geshem. You know, it would have been, it would have made sense for the neighboring provinces to request a meeting to normalize relationship. That would have been good to negotiate and put the cards on the table and the strain and everything out. In fact, it would have been tempting to go to negotiate a proper standing and to chat a little. That, that would never hurt. Hmm? <laughs> I'm about to say that. It would have been easy to take that opportunity for Nehemiah. And it would have been fatal. Fatal. 
Why? Because in the passage, we find that Nehemiah's enemies were out to harm him. They wanted to kill him, ultimately. So when you go into something that seems and looks a great opportunity in your life, but you don't listen to God and you don't pay attention whether you, go, you, uh, you need to go into that opportunity, then you can suffer very, very bad consequences. That's why you need to follow Jesus Christ all the time, asking Him, Lord, do you want me to do that? Is it your will? And when you sense something in your spirit, in your heart, in your soul, that something does not let you to have peace, something bothers you, then listen to that, what the Holy Spirit whispers very gently into your ears, spiritual ears, and into your heart. Because He wants to protect you from something probably major. So we have to be attentive and tuned to the radio station of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So it would sound clear. It would sound clear in your heart and in your mind. Every day, yes, we face unimaginable opportunities. More opportunities than we have ever been, uh, that haven't been available in the history or humankind. We have more entertainment, travel, business, career, meetings, investment opportunities and events than in any previous era. And you can be easily notified through online. Just get on Facebook, it's right there. Great opportunities, great meetings, great career uh, building uh, uh, things, investments and so on and so forth. Just go online and you will find thousands or maybe millions of these opportunities. However, opportunities can easily distract us from our mission and they may kill the vision and purpose that God bestowed upon your heart. And you know, the major issue with that and the major problem is that, that we can sacrifice God's vision for any number of opportunities that come our way. Do not let it happen, dearly beloved. Do not let it happen. Because after a while you get exhausted, spiritually, physically, and that can lead you to decisions that you have to pay the price for. And that's not good. Therefore, be wise in the Lord and know His will. Discover it, what His will is. Ask Him, talk to Him, and believe it that He will lead you. He will not let you, that, oh, you know what, figure it out by yourself. No, we, we, we don't have such God who just leaves us alone and, and, and do yourself, do it yourself kind of self. Uh, determination and uh, self-growing uh, uh, project type of thing. No. God is with you 24-7 since He promised in Jesus Christ. Surely I'm with you always to the very end of age. So if you're walking in Jesus, then you can ask Jesus, Lord, you want me to do this? Yes? No. And the Lord will show you. One way or the other. Maybe not the way that you think it would be, acceptable, but in a totally different way, maybe a way that you have never imagined. Because our God knows how to lead you on that way that He has prepared you in Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. That's number one. And overcome distractions by the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads you. He guides you. He shows you the truth. He shows you the way if you listen to Him. So therefore, let me lay this text onto your heart again. And I would like to encourage you with that 
and take this text with you to the upcoming week, our Heavenly Father says to you, my dearly beloved, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, I pray that each of us would learn and apply the phrase of Nehemiah. I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Help us to see your vision, O Lord, for the various areas of our lives and to be so committed to living them out that we would do whatever it takes to keep that vision and purpose from being killed by opportunities, fear, criticism, or by the daily grind. Heavenly Father, we know that the starting point of the vision and purpose is that each of us would have a personal and growing relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us, Father in Heaven, to follow Jesus and not getting distracted. And help us to focus on what matters most through your perspective, Heavenly Father. O Lord, I pray for this church, all the members, those who come to this church, members, non-members, our dear friends. Please bless their lives, Heavenly Father. Please be with them as we are trying to live our lives in the Lord Jesus every day and trying to make decisions to your glory and for benefiting others in the everyday life. O oh Lord, please be with us as a church so we may become more and more loving, accepting, faithful to your word, mission-minded, so we would lead more and more people to that personal relationship that we may enjoy. Heavenly Father, as the pastor of this church, I pray for the congregational meeting next week. Please bless us, Lord, as we are making important decisions and as we need to make difficult decisions and call each other's attention to some uh, decisions that we need to make in the future, in the near future, actually. Please guide us. I call upon you, dear Holy Spirit. Please come in with your presence and lead us and guide us, your, child, your children, your people in this church. First, Hungarian Reformed Church, here in Walton Hills. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.